Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the Ford Tech Make It Local channel. Uh, today we have a Ford 3.0 liter V6 Duratec engine here in the stand that has failed. Uh, which is really weird considering these engines are generally very, very reliable. Uh, they're probably the most reliable engine in the Ford inventory. Now it's even weirder as I had two of these come in the same week, same noise, same kind of failure, both needing engines. Now the other one did have 287,000 miles on it. Uh, and then this one had about 134,000 miles on it. So it's just breaking in basically. Um, but this one was overheated multiple times. Either way, that has nothing to do with the failure uh, that caused these engines to be replaced. Real quick, let's take a listen on how this sounds when it actually fails. It sounds like a rod's coming through the block on there any second now. Let's take a look. Pretty crazy sound, right? I mean, it sounds like the engine's ready to come apart. So, like I said, these engines are generally very, very reliable. Uh, the worst part about them are the oil leaks from the T-joints up here that come down and collect and uh, the bed plate on here and all that. That's the worst part about these engines is oil leaks, which is no big deal. Fix them and move on. Uh, the base engine long block on here is very reliable. Except for this one fatal flaw of this engine. One. One. It's going to blow your mind. So looking at this valve cover right here, you can see already something's going on. There's a lot of oil up inside of here. Okay. And it's cracked. Something obviously struck it from the inside. Okay. So let's go ahead and take it off and check it out. Uh, okay then. So it looks like both lash adjusters were ejected from the engine and struck the cover from the underside, then wedged into place. Unbelievable. So just look at this engine. I mean, it had some varnish on it, but it's been taken care of well enough. Um, the one fatal flaw of this engine, the reason why all this is happening, and I've seen this multiple times over the years on the earlier uh, versions of this engine, I would say 01, 07, okay? is the cam cap bolts and it's usually further back away from uh, the main cap up here usually it's back here here or the last one the bolts either loosen or they break or one loosens and then the other one breaks because at that point it's kind of whap 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 as it goes around it's not being supported and when it comes down to actually compress the valve, it's going down, up, down, and it's kind of beaten on the cap. So sometimes the cap actually breaks too. So it's either the, the bolts are loosening or one bolt is breaking, breaking, and then the other one, of course, is loosening. I mean, look at these things. They're coming out by hand. And, yep, just like that. I've seen it way, way too often. You obviously know uh, that this is not due to rust or anything like that. Um, it's, it's obviously a hardness issue with the bolts or it's the other one's loosening and then when it's beating on the cam cap, it just eventually breaks the other one. So it's just like a hammer effect on there. Literally, as I'm pulling them up by hand. So let's take a look at this. Uh, yeah. Let's take a look at this cam cap on here. So once this happens, like I said, it's going to be flopping back here and just kind of beating on it and chewing on it. And ugh. So it seems nice and polished, right? But you can see it's taken out quite a bit of the cam on there. I mean, it's pretty bad. And this is a sacrificial part of it. Uh, the, the actual cam on here is, gonna, is really hard uh, compared to the, uh, the cylinder head. So the head is what's going to take all the wear, beat, and the abuse. Uh, whereas the cam, he probably wants to polish that out, but it already took apart, uh, took out the cam cap. And then of course, if you look underneath here, you can kind of see it. It beat up the actual pocket in the head too. So of course, once the bolt breaks or they loosen one or two, it lifts back here. You can see it, right? You can see the back ends lifted instead of being capped all the way across like this and level. You can see the second one there, the intake cam, is lifting the back. So when it does that, of course, there's no spring pressure keeping uh, the um, roller followers in place. So they're just gonna shoot out in here somewhere. Look at that. 
Now, usually in the 543 valve, these things fail and cause all this, uh, except for the cam cap issue. Uh, but you can see this one, there's absolutely no issue with it besides being ejected. And here's the other one. They're just fine. But there's nothing holding them in place if they get ejected when these things are whopping around. And you can see uh, the port there where the lash adjuster was at. Yeah. So at this point, it's destroyed the friggin' head. And you can imagine the amount of labor to replace one of these heads. The whole engine has to come apart, basically. Um, and then the heads on these, because they're, they're dock heads, uh, they're very, very expensive. So if you own one of these engines, 01 to 07, and you're in there for any reason, let's say you're changing the valve cover gaskets and the front cover uh, for, for um, oil leaks, which I said are, like I said, are common. Personally, I would come in here, buy new bolts from Ford, and I would change bolts on one cap at a time. Change them out, torque them down. Change them out, torque them down. And it's kind of move around. Change them all out to the latest bolts from Ford and torque them down to 89 inch pounds before all this happens. Because otherwise, if you take care of the oil on these engines, these darn things will outlast the rest of the car. Usually it escapes rot out anyways. You know, so if you're in here for any reason, I would change the bolts. I'm not sure if it's a hardness issue or they're just loosening or it's both. Usually by the time I find them, uh, one of the bolts are broken on there. Yeah, let's check this one out real quick. And it's really simple. You can just take a regular quarter inch ratchet, you know, if you don't have a torque wrench and you want to check them real quick, eight mil socket, and you just try to loosen them. Put a little bit of pressure on there. They shouldn't move at all. And you just want to go around. To all of them on here. And just see, because like right now you can't tell any of these are loose, but I bet one of them is loose. Because, whoa, see? See, that one was just loose. Just a little bit of turning torque and it came loose. This one's still good. So yeah, even if that back one didn't fail, this one's gonna fail. This one's loose too. That one's okay. That one's okay. That one's okay. So yeah, just a little heads up for you guys that are out there uh, that own one of these. You know someone that owns one of these. Uh, be wary. The first thing you're gonna notice the very first thing you're gonna notice, and I've seen a lot of them come in with this issue, uh, and they were quiet um, still. That was in early stages. The first thing you're gonna notice is um, you're gonna notice uh, misfires on the cylinder that's affected, okay? So like if this one lifts up enough, and then, because they're loose, let's say, or one broke, one's loose, but it still didn't chew anything up, guess what? Those intake valves are not being actuated as far as they should be for the amount of uh, lift this cam can provide to actuate that individual valve on there. So guess what? Because the mixture is wrong, what should be coming in for air volume is wrong because it's not opening all the way because it's already lifted like this, then guess what? The amount of fuel coming in is gonna be wrong and you're gonna have a misfire on that cylinder. Don't ignore misfires on these because that's the early warning sign that one of these is loosening and we're not actuating the valve all the way. Not to mention the 3.0, if you ignore misfires on these, they'll melt the cats right away because they're part of the exhaust manifold, they're like right here. So once you have that raw fuel coming out, that thing's sitting here red hot because they're always staying hot because they're so close to all these ports on here and staying warm, um, they'll melt down right away and they're really expensive to replace. So, yeah, it all comes down to, to you know, paying attention to your engine and not just running these things into the ground. But yeah, that's the one fatal flaw with this engine, the one fatal flaw. And um, if it's gonna happen, it's gonna be because these bolts either break or loosen on there. And that's exactly what occurs on there. And it just beats it to death at this point. And it's really expensive to replace. Better off just to replace the engine. That's it, I'll see you guys next time.